Hi everyone, I use my iPad Pro as my main device for both work and consumption. Nowadays, there are really great, powerful and useful apps on iPad like DaVinci Resolve, which I still need to learn, LumaFusion, which I use for video editing, and Affinity apps like Affinity Photo, which I use to make my thumbnails in. But in other cases, some features that are available in certain desktop apps aren't available in the iPad apps. So I found it interesting to also have a look at the web versions of those apps and see what they have to offer. Let me show you an example. This here is my iPad that's connected to my external monitor. And I'll just open this, for example. This here is Spotify. First of all, if you look here at your home screen, the home screen kind of looks the same. You do have your uh, six most recently played playlists here on top, and you do get the same content. It's mainly when you get to your playlists that you do see a few differences. So first of all, a few things just go much faster. If you want to edit the title, just click on the title and you immediately can just change what it says here. And then you can also even just change the photo. Well, let's say this song here, I just want to like, click, and it's added to my liked songs. Now, the second thing you can see here is date added. Now you can sort in the iPad app. It seems like you cannot do it here in the online version, but you can see when a song has been added to a playlist. And that that's good because sometimes you want to see if playlists are recent or not, or if they have been recently updated. That's a good way of seeing that. Now, the third thing is sorting your playlists. So that's something you can't do in the iPad app, but here you can. So for example, if you want to have millennial youth nostalgia, this playlist here that I made with songs from 96 to 2006, if you want, you can, I can just grab this here and drag it here on top. And if I want to undo it, just grab it and just put it there again and it will move back. Now there is a feature that is available on PC and Mac, but also on the web and not on the iPad app. And that is the following. If you tap on three dots and then you go to create similar playlist. So these are songs that I don't even know. Some artists I do, but the songs I've never heard before. So that's something that I do want to get into later after making this video. So that's something very interesting. Create similar playlist is available here on the web the web app, but not in the iPad app. Definitely a recommendation to try it out. Now, just in case you're wondering, yes, you can, of course, play music through the web app. And there are even some lyrics that are available and that even, yeah, synchronize. So that even works as well, all on the web. That is really cool. The only thing is, if you want to have downloaded music, I do recommend you to have, of course, a Spotify app on your iPad, but you can still use this to control it. Of course, you need to have internet for it, but still you can control your Spotify app through this app. Let me just show you instead. Let me just take this song over here. It currently says here, web player, Safari. If I tap on this, I can choose this iPad instead. And now it's using the iPad app instead. If we go back to my web app, then you will see here it changed to listening on iPad. I can still control the music in the app using the web app. So yeah, that's the cool thing about Spotify Connect. Uh, they can still use this. So yeah, that is how you can use it as well. So now the question is, how did I get this web app to be on my iPad? First of all, go to open.spotify.com, sign in and make sure you are on the web player already. Then go to share, add to home screen. Now if you tap on this, add to home screen, the icon will change instead of a, like a screenshot of the website, you will see a Spotify icon. Now to distinguish that from the real app, I called it Spotify web. And that's the link. You can't change that, of course. And I hit add. All right. And it will appear on your home screen on your iPad and also here in your library. So if I would search now for Spotify, Spotify, I will see the Spotify app and yeah, the web apps. I now have two of them, but also the web apps will appear here. So that is really cool. And yeah, so that is how you get it then eventually. And if you open it, you will see this, what I've been showing you the whole time now. Okay, next we're gonna take a look at Twitter. Now, personally, I do use the regular uh, uh, Twitter app, I mean, not a third-party app, but I just use the Twitter app because of the notifications and so on. You also have a an online version, a web version. So if you tap on here, this here, for example, is the web app. It kind of looks similar. There are a few differences here and there. So just tap here on tweet and you have a few options. So, okay, your library, GIFs or GIFs, poll that you also have here, of course. This here is a schedule tweet. So you can tweet something, you can schedule it and confirm it, and you can just view your scheduled tweets. So for example, here, I'll just type, uh, this is tweeted from a video I'm recording. And let me just schedule that for January 4, which is today, uh, but of course not now, but let's say an hour from now and confirm. Okay, so we'll send on January 4, schedule. That's it. That is something you cannot do 
in the, iP in the iPad app or the iOS app uh, from Twitter. And the nice thing here is you don't get a pixelated icon, but you do actually get a real looking Twitter icon. So if you type here Twitter, there you go, you do get here uh, Twitter for web or Twitter web. I accidentally added two of them. <laughs> but anyway, this here is the one, but they all have nice looking icons. And another Twitter related app is called TweetDeck. What I like about TweetDeck is that it can add multiple columns, each containing a stream of a certain account. So I can add multiple accounts and just see all the tweets coming in as they're being tweeted per account. I can even add columns where I can see all the messages, all the notifications, all in one scrollable page. Really cool and uh, yeah, if you use multiple accounts or you just want to keep an eye on tweets that are coming in live, this is definitely worth a try. And also here it's possible to add TweetDeck to your iPad as a separate web app. Now you might be thinking, I'll just delete the iPad app. But there's one thing that you might miss and those are notifications. As Safari right now doesn't support web notifications as of now, I said. Because in a WWDC in uh, 2022 last year, they announced web notifications coming to Safari on iOS 16. So let's hope they will come soon. I'm not 100% sure if it will work the same way we are used to in apps. And if web apps that you install on your iPad and iPhone do actually support it. So we'll have to see how it works and if it will work for what we're doing right now in this video. But that would really be, yeah, that would really be cool. Now besides Spotify and Twitter, there are more web apps to discover. We are used to using Word on iPad, Word on Windows, Word on Mac. We also first have the online platform Microsoft 365, which you could also uh, just go to through office.com or Microsoft 365. Now again, certain things you can only do in the iPad apps, but then again, here online in the Microsoft 365 environment, you can choose between online templates. In Word Online, you could switch to a classic ribbon. And if you dig into the Word Online app, for example, you'll notice that there's some things you can do here, but not in the iPad app and vice versa. And if you're done with your document, just click here on done, and then you're back to the Microsoft 365 environment. So if you're a Microsoft 365 user, you might want to have a look at the online platform and see what are the possibilities for you. And one more app that you could consider using is the Instagram web app. Now, we don't have an iPad app for Instagram. Good thing though is with Stage Manager, you can move around the Instagram app freely now. So that's okay. Like if I do it here, i um, not sure which one is which now, but if I would now open the Instagram app, I could now just have it float here on the side. Okay, so this here's my other uh, profile. So this here's the Instagram iPhone app and this here is the web app. Anyway, that's something that you could just consider using if you hate having the black bars on your iPad, if you don't have Stage Manager, or if you just want to have a different view of Instagram on your desktop. Anyway, what do you think of the use of web apps? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.